this early on Sunday morning and um, I'm at the Festival of Sloth, which is a, a very silly gathering for very silly cars, um, which you probably hear in the background. And um, I'm going to try and do a bit of sketching. Hopefully the car won't drive off before, it, um, before I get anywhere. I've just made a, a very quick start. Here's the car. It's called an AV monocar. So most of these cars are from around the sort of time of the First World War, that kind of era. Um, they were the cheapest way to get motoring. I think you didn't even need a car license to use one, you could use a bike license. Uh, here's the sketch that I've got so far. Let's try and get that in focus. So it's the usual thing, I've done I've worked very quickly, just try to get the basic proportions down with very light pencil work so that if I need to change anything it's not too big a problem. I'm not doing any detail work, I'm literally just trying to get the big shapes down and the perspective guide. Um, and then I'll carry on and start sort of firming things up next. Morning. Sketch fast, do you? Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a panic because you're worrying that the cars are going to drive off. But I saw this one being towed back yesterday, so maybe it won't be. <laughs> so here we are, part way through. Um, I've sort of started putting some shading in and just tidying things up. I'm happy with the main positions of everything. Um, uh, I might just get my ellipse templates out just to tidy up those wheels and make my life a bit easier. I'm trying to work quite quick, so that might help speed things up. And um, yeah, and then I'll start putting in the really dark shadows and, and deciding how to make it look a bit more three-dimensional, which it doesn't quite look 3D at the moment. It's a bit, a bit cluttered, so I want to try and make that a bit clearer. So if you're using templates, you're going to have to have, on a perspective drawing, you're going to need templates of every shape and size. So these go up in five degree increments, and there's a whole pack of them. There we are. I've got some small ones and some big ones. Um, if you want to find out how to line them up and whether you've got the right degree for the thing you're drawing, you can actually look through your template. There's a 40 degree one that should match up with the front wheel there, pretty much. That's, that way you know you've got the right size. So these are yesterday's sketches, the top ones are Tamplin, these are done with a biro and watercolour onto watercolour paper. A bit of a weird combination, but I kind of got used to it. This next one's a bouquet, or a bucket. And then there's the AV Monocar again. With it being watercolour paper, it's a bit rougher than what I usually draw on with a ballpoint, and it wasn't as easy. Definitely smoother paper is better for the ballpoint, I think. That's the Bedelia where the driver sits behind the passenger. That's the Elf. And this crazy Condor, which nobody could quite work out why it was built like that with three wheels, two on one side, one on the other. <laughs> so here we are so far. Um, I've uh, tidied everything up, tidied up the ellipses. Um, gone a bit darker on some of the um, really deep shadows and things and added a shadow under under the car which was really useful because it um, without that it just it, it, things seem to float around and so it's a really good idea to have a shadow just to anchor it to the ground tell people where the ground is but I still felt it was just kind of a bit empty on the page so I'm going to just loosely put in the car behind as well the the, uh, the bends so I'll uh, I'll drop that in, but I'm not going to put much detail because it's very, very light so that it sort of recedes into the background. This sketch that I'm doing of the car behind is kind of like the, um, the rough layout sketch that I'd usually do at the beginning of a, a drawing. It's that kind of level of detail. It's very light. It's just the basic shape to the right place. flywheel on the back there. I think I spent long enough on that one so we'll call that one done and um, I'll take you on a little tour around the paddock and we'll show you what else is going on. So here we have the AV monocar. It's the first time I've ever seen one of those. It's very sporty, single seater. Next to it the Benz. The recreation of the first ever car really. It's called a Benjamin, this one. Very beautifully built. This is 
the Terro engines special. Maybe a GN, looks like a wooden GN chassis maybe. Come back to that one. <laughs> and a Peugeot Quadrillette, I think that's called. Beautiful, sort of staggered seats. All original works of it. So this sturdy looking car is O'Reilly, which I've never seen before. Everything's really solidly built on it. Yeah, for a cycle car, it looks a bit, um, yeah, a bit well built compared to everything else. Over this side, we've got a Bedelia. Fabulous French car where the driver sits at the back and the passenger in the front. And it's belt driven. And instead of a clutch, you have a big lever that moves the back axle backwards and gets tension in the belt. <laughs> Which is one of the maddest things you can think of. Yeah, so you got the, and then you get a number of bits like this for fitting yeah. in. There's the lever that gets the drive to the belt. This is Nick Jonkahira's bike, which is a, a 1905 Triumph, very, very early. There's no gearbox or anything on there, you just, um, apparently you just do everything on the compressor, the decompressor. <laughs> I think that might be a Humber. Yeah, the Humber, Humberette maybe. Another Humberette. This is a Morgan Grand Prix. One more, one more Humber. And out the back there, a GN. The GN's a bit too good for this sort of event. <laughs> It's still a lovely cycle car. Do you like those wings as well? This is the Busy Bee, which apparently is a yeah, sort of genuine early racer. Might have been a Brooklyn's racer. So this is the Bouquet, which I think was probably sort of First World War era. And it's got a very, very early engine of the Dion Bouton, sort of from the 1890s, sort of thing you might see in a trike. Which is the one that had the stripes on the tank during that? So that's a, a baby Peugeot, which is some of Ettore Bugatti's earliest work. It's really beautifully built, very nice little engine. And next to it is Mark Walker's Belty which is his belt-driven GM, very, very early again for a GM, which he heroically drove here from his home sort of five-hour road trip after racing at Mallory in the Darak. <laughs> Only he would do something like that. There's the AC sociable, somebody being interviewed. And this is an Otave. This is a car that I saw at this event years back in pieces. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> so I saw this years back in pieces just um, as a project. And now here it is up and running. And it runs really well, actually. It's quite a fast car. Again, it was, so an Otav was an Italian car, quite a sort of frumpy looking sort of passenger car where you'd sit very high up. But this one was converted for racing. With this, and it's got this quite a decent sized Jap engine in there. So it gives it some serious turn of speed. It's a fantastic, very early Morgan that sort of seems unrestored. I don't know if it's never been restored. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Not much to it. That looks like an acetylene light. Yeah. So they put um, carbide in this chamber and add some water and the, it starts a chemical reaction, sends some gases up the pipes, and then you can light the flame in the lights there. So this is the Temperino, tiny little Italian car. Like those solid disc, disc wheels. And also it's got a, another carbide tank there on the side. 
So this is a recreation of one of the very first Morgans using old original pieces and things, but there, there aren't any original tiller steered Morgans around anymore. So this chap built this using old parts just so that he could experience what it would have been like to drive one. And he's driven it at 55 miles an hour on, on the banking at Mundari, which is pretty scary, I imagine. Here we've got another AC sociable next door. And next to that, I think this is a home-built creation using all, whatever he had in the house, <laughs> including the kitchen sink. It's got a lot of character. This is one of my favourite cars at the event. It's a Tamplin from 1920-ish, I think. I just love everything about it. It's got a lovely simple shape underneath everything, good proportions. There it goes. And, oh, eat. So the Festival of Sloth isn't just about pushing cars up hills. It's also about pushing lawn mowers around <laughs> and trying to get those to start as well. But um, what we're going to have a look at now is lawn mower Le Mans. I'm not quite sure what that involves, but there'll be vintage lawn mowers doing something silly. <laughs> oh, Mark's made a quick start there on his trip there. But Robin's coaching. I don't know. Maybe Robin's is actually running. Is this? Is the Anzani Tien in the head? Come on, Mark. Ah, the French from there, he's just using a roll like that. I don't know if that's allowed. But what's going on here? Oh, dear. <laughs> the house lawnmower and the Anzani neck and neck here, but the line's moving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's still two people coming. This is done for me. Here goes Mark. Just about to cross the finish line on the lawnmower that he used when he was five years old. <laughs> still in the family. <laughs> it's Robin and Tom. Pit crew, pit crew. <laughs> <laughs> you look exhausted, it's like you just run a race. <laughs> this is my brother in law. He can't resist the challenge of a broken machine that won't work or broken anything.